Hi, welcome to the Drama Free Living Podcast. It's Dennis and Lisa McEntee. And Lisa, this has been really, really fun. I think it's really hit like a core need, really, because it's the question that our clients always ask us many times. It's whether it deals with how do I delegate more effectively, more efficiently, and how do I hold my team accountable? Right? What what does that look like in a healthy way, not a dictatorial demand and command, salute and stay mute type culture, but how do I navigate through some of these things? And if you have not downloaded the Focus Leader 5-Day Challenge, go to dramafreeresults.com and it is five days with five quick 30-second videos, five strategies on how to really clarify priorities, how to help reduce stress within team members, how to help team members make better decisions, five quick strategies, things that we're not even talking on in the podcast, but we wanted you to have it. So it's dramafreeresults.com. And that's totally free. And it's just something to to help you um, be, a, be a better leader, be a better um, C-suite, be a better executive yeah. and lead your teams better. And and it's super quick because we we as, as high-level leaders, high-performing individuals, we there's a lot on our plates and we don't have a lot of time to just be messing around with stuff that's not effective. And so that's why we created it. It's short, it's sweet, it's free, and it just every little bit helps. And it's a, it's a refocusing tool is really what it is. Yeah. So Lisa, let's go through some of the other pitfalls. There's really pitfalls of delegation and accountability. One was lack of trust in your team. Like what kind of hit your brain when we talked about like lack of trust with the team? When you don't, when your team doesn't trust you and you don't trust your team, there is is an inconsistency of results. There's an inconsistency yeah. and, a, and a speed of doing business together that is lacking. You yeah. can't you can't get things done if you don't trust the other person that they're taking care of their, their stuff because that takes mental energy and your mental energy is focused on, okay, I've got this project going and I don't know if my, my coworker is taking care of their part. And so your energy is, it's kind of leaking. Yeah. Uh, another one, Lisa, was uh, fear of losing control. And I think for me, the big takeaway was the Dan Sullivan quote where he said, you know, um, stay in charge of what you do best and let your team have control. And so really like, you know, giving control away of the how, but be in charge. So stay in charge, but, um, you know, you don't have to be in control. Another one, we just talked about a bunch of communication pitfalls. We That was like opening a can of worms with that one. What, what was your takeaway there? Communication. It's one of those things that everybody needs and, and nobody, nobody really focuses on and does because you forget how important it is. And you don't know how important it is, how well run communication is until it's not happening. And so sometimes we just take our, our foot off the gas and we coast and then we get into all these problems. And so the importance of us just setting up intentional ways to communicate clearly and effectively so we don't end up, you know, in a mess. Yeah. Um, an another one we talked about was reluctance to invest the time up front. And uh, probably my favorite quote is from uh, Big Rick Lindsday at uh, MoCow Services, right? He, he says, he says, it always takes so much time, but it works every time I do it, right? It takes time, but it works every single time. So investing that time up front and getting the payoff on the back end. Another one, Lisa, we talked about, and you, you did so good with this, just giving us your thoughts on failure to match the skills and the job with the talent that you have. Absolutely. We we as individuals, we typically know what we're good at and we're not what we're not good at, but sometimes we don't know how that actually plays out in the workplace. Mm. Yeah. And how's, how it plays out on a team. Because I know who I am, but who am I and how does that work interacting with you right. and with the other members in our, of our team and their, the strengths that they have? And being able to match up these people to fit, it's their puzzle pieces. And in order to create a well-run team, you have to have all of the pieces in the right spot. And so utilizing some of these different assessments, some of these different tools to understand what your team needs or what the different teams under you need and what they're lacking and how you can pull and you can borrow a strength or you can borrow a capability from another team temporarily to be able to continue to move forward effectively. Well, and I think CEOs, it's just thought just hit me, Lisa, is I think they need to learn not necessarily how to lead how they're gifted, but to lead the people how the people are gifted. Mm -hmm. Right. To realize like this is what you got, because so many times we're trying to get orange juice from an apple. Right. We're trying to get this grapefruit to give me an apple juice and then just get the best grapefruit. If you got a grapefruit and get the best grapefruit juice you can get from it. 
Um, you know, along with that, it, yeah. it just reminds me of the five love languages. And oh, yeah. so this is, there's five love languages in the workplace. There's five love languages in parenting, yeah. in, in marriages. And I, I remember when we were, when we were raising our kids, there's, so if you're not familiar with five love languages, it's fantastic concept, but it's what acts of service, gifts, encouragement, Physical touch. Physical touch and quality time. And those are the five. And when we were raising our kids, I really didn't know what their love language was. And as a parent, we wanted to love our kids well, but we wanted them to feel loved. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't know what their love language was. We didn't know what we could do so that they could truly feel loved. Now, as they got older and we kind of learned and figured those things out, we knew better. But initially what we had to do is we spoke all five love languages to mm -hmm. each of our kids. So me personally, I'm physical touch, quality time, Dennis's yeah. words of encouragement and acts of, service. acts of service. And so it's completely different. Well, in order for my acts of service child to feel loved, acts of service for me is like way down here, right? Yeah. But for him to feel loved, he needed acts of service. And so I had to speak that for my child to feel loved. And it's the same with a, a, a leader, the C-suite and organization is you have got to be able to lead your team, not how you want to be led, but you have to lead your team according to what they need. And it's stretching for a leader to be able to speak all of those different mm -hmm. avenues and those different ways of of being a, a, a lead, just yeah. like as a parent, being able to speak all the different love languages for your child, because yeah. otherwise you're not going to have that speed of that speed of trust, that speed of efficiency, the speed of doing business will slow down because there's a disconnect there because you you're not communicating well and you're not working with them in the way that they are made. Yeah. And if you need some help with that, just reach out to us. We've got some quick hacks that we can share with you. So we'll put some of our contact information, reach out to us and we'd love to help you because that's probably one thing that our clients go, man, they really are appreciative mm -hmm. of, you know, of some of those hacks. So we'll, we'll share it with you. And then the last one we talked about was this whole pitfall of um, inconsistency when you're not consistent and really consistency creates the stability. So just think about it, just be the same, right? If this fire, if something fires you up, let it fire you up every time. And that just creates it or if this excitement you let it excite you every time and it just creates this consistency and stability and sense of safety and you want to create a sense of safety for people so that they show up and they bring their best self to work and work on your ability to emotionally regulate because that's often why we show up inconsistent is because we are not emotionally regulated and and you know yeah. one moment you know you're flying off the handle and the other the next time it's totally fine and and people are confused around you because they're not sure well I'm not sure which I'm not sure which Dennis is going to show up Dr. here. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Right. And so and so they walk on eggshells yeah. and then there's low trust and you know you you really can't do much if if you have a low trust environment. And it's really so we created emotionally intelligent for that reason and what people have told us is that that idea of regulating your emotions. We have the emotional regulator mm -hmm. that's inside of that self-paced course. So we'll put a link to that and that's a resource for you. But um, if you need help in that area or if you know somebody who needs help, listen, mm -hmm. buy it for a gift. We've had plenty of um, even C-suite CEOs buy it for their entire teams. And so that's a resource for you. And hey, if you need bulk pricing, just um, reach out to our team and um, we can we, we can help you with that. So let's get into the last two pitfalls of delegation and accountability. And a key one, Lisa, is this avoiding difficult conversations. Now, here's what's interesting. Inc. Magazine, okay, they just put out this survey and they said 70% of leaders are scared to talk to their employees about difficult things. Mm -hmm. right, but think about how many times, I don't know if they're going to blow up. I might, they might quit. They might leave, right? They might then, get sued. Might get sued. I mean, it's real. Yeah, those are real things, you know, especially like in some of our industries that we work in. Um, senior living is a great example where there's some challenges with employees. And we've even had, you know, executive directors that we've worked with said, hey, I, I don't want to have that hard conversation with that nurse because, you know, 10 other nurses think she's amazing. And if she walks out the door, she's going to take the whole nursing staff with her. And I'm going to be left alone here working night. And those are realities, okay? Mm -hmm. But we're not minimizing those. Those are real emotional realities that we have to walk through and have to navigate through. So let's just talk about maybe some of the things that we can do. The first thing is that we really have to deal with like our fear of conflict, okay? And really like reframe what conflict is. Like, you know, and what obstacles really are, right? Because obstacles are really the raw material 
that you need. It's like actually the obstacles and, you know, these hard things are really like the stepping stones, but you've got to go through them. But, you know, when we have this fear, because typically, Lisa, I mean, when you're afraid of something, do you run to it or run away from it? Absolutely run away. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think some of or us... Or I we, just freeze. Yeah. And I think some of us, we have to, re, you know, um, change our relationship with fear. So remember the first time we were in Maui? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and, I re, and I don't know if you remember this, right? But we were on this boat, first time snorkeling, right? And we we're going out to where like you didn't see any land. Right. And so both of us are kind of freaked out about the ocean anyways. Right. A little bit. Yeah. Right? I mean, so there's some really big creatures right? out there. I'm things, not going to lie. Things in the ocean. Right. And I they remember. They can eat you. Yeah. And I remember we're on the boat. We're getting ready to go snorkeling. And, and they started to upsell you. Right. And that's how you know you're on an excursion. You know you're on an excursion when you're being upsold. Right. So we're there and they, they talk about this new thing called snoobing where they take an oxygen tank and float it out into the water. And they got 10 hoses from the oxygen tank. And they said, hey, just for 10 people, extra $150. You're going to go down 10 feet underwater. You're going to see things you've never seen before that you won't see on the surface. And as they're explaining about it, Lisa, how did you feel? Totally freaked out. Oh, yeah. Like my heart was palpable. I'm living Jaws. I'm living the movie Jaws yeah. in the middle of them. To, and I'm like, I'm I'm going to be a victim of Jaws. Yeah. Well, and, and I remember I was like, you know, I, I don't know who said it, but like I turned to say, oh, my gosh, that kind of freaks me out. And you're like, yeah. And then, and then I think you said, well, you know what that means, right? And I was like, really? You go, yeah, we got to do it. Right? It's like, it, this is what I'm afraid of. So that's what I'm going to do. Got to run toward it. Yeah, and and learning to run toward some of these fears because here's the thing that I've realized is that when you run to a fear, does it ever leave? It it never leaves. In fact, does it get worse or does it get – it actually gets worse, right? The fear just builds. So it's better just to run into it and step into it. I mean a classic example is that we we had a roundtable participant, been working with us the last couple years, a very large manufacturing – glass manufacturer up up in – in, in another state. And, but she had a particular relationship that was a high level person on her team, really one of the co-owners uh, and, and really the CEO that had all these relationships with the different vendors. And really it came time for them to part ways, right? Mm-hmm. They just had different visions of, of where they wanted to take the organization. And she put this off for like months. She didn't want to have the conversation because, you know, she was afraid. She was afraid, I'm going to have this conversation. He's probably going to leave and he's going to take all of our vendors and suppliers with him. They're all going to go with him. Well, you know, she discovered she had the conversation and all the vendors stayed Mm -hmm. and just be willing to step into it. Now, here's the reality. And and if you've seen me in workshops, you know, this is like a fun phrase that I always say is that it's whatever you don't address, you endorse. Right, I don't know how fun that is. Well, it's it's something I always I always think of something that I need to address. In fact, I just thought of something I need to go address today. Whatever you don't address, you endorse. And and the reality is, is you cannot complain about what you permit. And for us at as CEOs, like we're permitting everything in our organization. Right. And how many times do we we walk and we don't see something? We, we see something, but we don't want to address it. And then you know what we've done is we've just endorsed it in our organization. So we want you to step in and, and sort of step into that fear. And then I think sometimes another sort of challenge becomes with that pitfall of um, avoiding difficult conversations is uncertainty of how to, become, how to begin. I'm not quite sure how to have the conversation. So here's the thing that we teach uh, CEOs is you share intention, you share context before you share content. Share intention, share context before you share. And what that means is that you tell people why you're doing something. Hey, my intention is not to hurt your feelings. We just need to have this hard conversation. Hey, you know, I don't want you to think you're not a valuable member of the team. We just need to address this issue. Hey, I don't want you to feel like I don't care about you. Let's talk about this. And what you've done is you've shared the intention before you shared the content. And even along that line would be you are a valuable member of the team. And just letting them know kind of, Letting them know what they bring and letting them know we need to have a conversation and you, this is not a bad conversation. It's it's a little bit of a tweaking. We just need to make some adjustments because we value you so much and because we see who you are as an individual and your strengths and your capabilities. And we're, we're working on working smarter and working better together so everyone's happy. And so when you share that intent, it's it's so much better because it's way better than, hey, I need to see you in your office, in in my office in 15 minutes. And, and, right, and just leave Mike it there. Mic drop, what are you going to do? I'm like, uh, crap, I'm getting fired. 
Yeah, those are, those are realities. And think about what that does to your team. So here, here's our encouragement because a lot of CEOs are really good at this is what and this is why. Here, we're going to do this because blank, blank, blank. So I shared the what and then the why. We want you to reverse it. We want you to share the why and then the what. Get better at the why first and then the what. I mean, you still got to share the what, but because the, the challenge is, is that you share the what and people don't even hear what the comes why. after that. They don't even hear, especially if they disagree, they don't like it. It's hard for them to hear. They don't even hear that. And you think you shared the why, but they don't. So why before what, not what before why. So why before what, a fantastic way to step into those hard conversations. And we just got to talk about this is that you got to walk, walk through the emotional discomfort. And you know, here's the thing that we want to encourage you. It's supposed to be comfortable, it's all uncomfortable. It's supposed to be uncomfortable, right? It's like sometimes like, oh, I don't want to do it because it's uncomfortable. Well, it's supposed to be. If it wasn't uncomfortable, then, you know. It, it, the conversation doesn't need to happen. Yeah. And so it is, it, that is normal. I want to normalize fear and discomfort, right? Normalize it. And then you'll start to run to it because those typically are the roadblocks that are like stopping you from going to that next step, to, taking your organization to that next level. So really don't avoid the hard conversations. Whatever you don't address, you endorse and just step into them. Lisa, our, our last pitfall. I thought this was really good. You came up with this one. This is unclear roles, unclear expectations, and unclear responsibilities. Um, when when you don't know, when roles and expectations are are unclear, really you you just end up with a tangled mess of mm -hmm. confusion and inefficiency, um, and then it becomes a guessing game, um, which just leads to frustration, um, and it leads to missed deadlines, and it leads to dropped balls. And so those just being able able to have clear roles, clear responsibilities, clear clear expectations. And we think, oh yeah, they know what they're doing. They know what their job is. Well, take a minute and actually sit down and talk to them. Take a minute and, and sit down with your team. Um, Brad Stevenson, um, yeah. he is, he's one of our, our clients at the, uh, in our round table. And he's just amazing about, he just gets in there with his team. He gets in there and he just chats with them and he finds out where they're at and kind of takes their pulse individually one-on-one. -on -one. And you know what? That takes time. But if you're going to build your team and you're going to build a successful organization, you've kind of got to be able to take that pulse and know if someone's got in the right role and has the right expectations or, or knows their responsibilities. And so there's a couple different things that you can do to just clarify this, to clean it up. And one would be to just clarify the roles, clarify the expectations by taking the time. Take the time to deliver the clear set of communication, clear set of roles, responsibilities. It takes time and you can't just assume that they know. Right. And if you want them to give the best in the time they have, you got to give them your time to be the best, right? And you got to give your best in the with time, right? Because a lot of times you say, well, it just takes time. Yeah, you got to give your best in that time so that during their time, they're going to give their best. So you give your best, they're going to give their best. Yes, yeah, so don't just check out during this time. It's You've got to be actively engaged. And so it's being clearly communicating specific roles and responsibilities, but it's also clearly clearly communicating regarding goals and timelines and performance standards. It's just it's just laying it all out there and not leaving something to be left assumed. Now, now Lisa, I think this is what makes it hard for um, CEOs, and I know it makes it hard for me, is this whole idea of like, we want it to be efficient, right? We want, and uh, Chad Johnson is a, is a friend of mine, and he, he's been a coach at Strategic Coach Murray for years, and he said something that, I, like I've said a lot of different places, so shout out to Chad Johnson. But he told me, he said, Dennis, he said, relationships are not efficient. Mm -hmm. And as much as you want them to be, they're just not. And, and it's okay, right? But you got to take this time because they're not going to be efficient, but you got to take this time to, to give your best so that they'll turn around and give you their best. Absolutely. Uh, another aspect of just clearing up the roles and the responsibilities is establishing accountability mechanisms. And accountability really, it's the glue that holds delegation together. It so really when you're is. when you're delegating, what's going to keep that moving well and keep it keep it concise is is accountability. And that's just establishing clear accountability mechanisms with your team. You know, that each team member knows who's responsible for what and and how success is measured. What is the definition of success here? And and what is the what is that this expectation? What's the responsibility? Who where are things at 
and at what time. Well, and really like defining the timeline for the check-ins. Right. Right. Because how many times do like we agree and we delegate something and then we come back two days later and we go, hey, where are you at on that? And I go, well, I wasn't supposed to check in. You said next, we agreed next week. I was checking in on where that is. Gee, this doesn't sound like a familiar conversation at I, all. I, you know, it, it's been, we've heard about it, right? We have a friend that this happens to sometimes. Asking for a friend. Right, asking, asking for, for a friend. friend. Maybe you got this problem. Yeah, but it, just remembering that, you know, this, it's two-way street. Absolutely. So it's implementing regular check-ins, regular reviews, regular mm -hmm. performance evaluations to track progress. And this mm -hmm. is this can be a performance evaluation for an individual, but it can be also a performance evaluation on a project mm -hmm. or on a specific um, task that's going on. And it's and it's implementing those. We calendarize them. We calendarize and that's how we um, we do our check-ins and that's how we make sure that we are doing these regular things because when accountability is woven into the fabric of our team culture, it just becomes a strategic tool for, for driving the results. Okay. So say that again, accountability is woven in. When accountability is yeah. woven into the fabric of the team culture, mm. then delegation becomes a strategic tool for driving results. And so th I think that's part of the goal, right? For you is how do you make accountability? Just, it's just woven into the fabric. It's just, we just know this is our rhythm of check-ins. This is the ebb and flow, right? And the team knows what control looks like. They know what in charge looks like. So at least I think that is the brilliant statement. I love that. Yeah. And then and then it's fostering open communication. So you've got these, you impl you've implemented regular check-ins and you've taken the time to to set clear specific roles and goals and timelines. But then you also have this process of open communication, hmm. encouraging um, regular dialogue and regular feedback. It's 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 almost like water cooler talk, like yeah, your door important. is always open. Yeah. And it's because it's this opportunity to create channels for transparent communication as team members. These are one-on-ones, um, could be digital collaboration, but it just, it's to keep everyone informed and engaged. There's plenty of different tools um, that you can utilize to to increase this this open communication and and we've got some tools but then there's also you know there's there's things like communication channels there's things like slack there's things like trello that are project management there's there's all of these different um, online tools that are electronic that help with this open communication but then also I know we've got the what the intention clarifier and that's it's a just, great tool it's a great tool that we developed and it's and it's just it's really a one sheet and it's pretty much a brain dump on this is this is what we want this is best result this is what needs to happen we know it's a success if this happens if it does if it doesn't happen mm -hmm. if it's a failure and, and then everybody's just, on the same page it just kind of dumps it all out there and yeah. then it even gives a a kind of an er, a timeline and a priority of when this all needs to happen and it it allows everyone to be informed it allows all of us to be on the same page because when communication flows freely you know delegation becomes a collaborative endeavor and effort. And then the team just flows much better. Yeah. And we just want to encourage like our t all teams look different. Like we run a remote team, but a plenty of our clients have maybe some will have one location. We, we have some that have multiple locations across the country. And so the question is for you is like, how do we foster an open collaborative environment an open uh, environment where people can communicate, even though Whatever constraint you believe, even though we're across the nation, hey, even though we're a multi, we're we're a remote team, hey, even though we have fourteen different locations in this state, how can we still foster and don't don't use it, don't allow excuses to sort of like kind of hold you back? Just get creative with that question. Hey, even though our roadblock, hey, even though we're this, how can we still like and let your brain get creative with it? Yeah, and then and we even have clients they deal with multi multilingual um, oh, yeah. teams, and so that's a whole nother challenge. And so being able to take your organization and and make it your own, make these things your own on what your biggest challenges are and how yeah. you can incorporate these things in. Yeah, this has been great, Lisa. I think for me, as we're kind of closing up this whole series, it really goes back to this one statement: "Whatever I don't address, I endorse," and just being very conscious of you know, seeing things and being aware and then just stepping in and having the hard conversation quicker rather than later. And um, just seeing the speed of efficiency 
kind of increase. So for you, what what's hitting your brain today? The Just the importance of clarity, mm. of good communication, clarifying roles and expectations, clarifying timelines, and then making a the opportunity for for regular check-ins or for regular communication, just setting those things up in the system. Mm. So there's a process for it and it becomes automatic. It's it's kind of like brushing yeah. your teeth in the morning. You just know that's what's gonna happen. You know, we know we're gonna have check-ins with these teams, you know, this many times during the week or during the month. It's just part of what we do. And then if we don't need to have it, then great. We just have a little bit of extra time to work on something and it's bonus time. But if you don't set those up in advance, yeah. then you can be setting yourself up for a fall. It's really because being intentional be... in creating a rhythm right. for that. Oh, this has been great. So listen, if you have not downloaded the Focus Leader 5-Day Challenge, go to dramafreeresults.com. It's your gift. And really, it's going to help you align your team so that you have, you really delegate better, it's create a system of accountability, kind of weave it into the fabric of your organization. And it's our gift to you. And um, I think our work is done here. So we'll see you next time on the Drama Free Living Podcast. Mm-hmm.